So I'm going to make a class on tax equity. I'm, we're going to make two classes. I, I think we have to separate one for wind, where you have a yield base flip and production tax credit, and other for solar. Now, if you're not interested in this arcane partnership tax law in the U.S. that affects this, you might want to turn off this video, but maybe not for the first one, because I'm going to talk a little bit about corporate PPAs, renewable energy credits, and other subjects. Now, I've shown you this uh, 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 page before, but I am going to make let me see how many videos I'm going to make. I think four or five videos. So I talk about this. Is the, I think I've talked about this before. All these arcane terms: 734, 741, 731, 704B deemed cash distribution. Oh God! And I'm not, uh, standard warnings. Blah blah blah. Okay. Some people love this stuff. They think they're so smart uh, and they can make things so complicated and get really gigantic fees. So here are the parts that I'm going to make. Can I make this into... Uh, uh, <laughs> obviously, I'm not very good at this PowerPoint. Shit. Okay, let's, we're going to have five parts. Uh, I just wanted to count those five parts. So I'm going to be sit, sitting here making videos for a while. My favorite thing to do in the world. And the first one, I'm just going to talk about pre-tax pre operating cash flow. So that's just going to cover all these subjects I just mentioned. I'm going to have a separate video that goes through the partnership uh, uh, financing, potentially, and all the making a balance sheet and computing the taxes, not for the partnership, but the taxes the partnership uh, uh, allows in computing something called a hypothetical after-tax IRR. That, ugh. That might be a tiny bit interesting for you if you're not in tax equity. Then I'm going to go through the tax equity investor. I, I, we're going to split things between the tax investor and the, 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 the sponsor. That's how I, I've been told, yelled at, that that's what I'm supposed to name these two things. And we're going to compute the IRR before stranded taxes and after, because that's the big deal in a solar project. In a solar project, these potential for uh, um, uh, for not the tax investor crying because their IRO is only 40, 38% instead of 50% because they can't use all the taxes and they have to prove that it's they're, they're really taking risk in the project, blah, blah, blah. Now, some theoretical ideas when I do this, I'm going to go through some Excel. And for example, when I do this, we'll click on this little button and it'll take you to where these are computed. Or we can click on this one. Whoops, not that one. That one, we can take you where that's computed. We'll talk about merchant projects. We'll show you where that's computed. That's computed. And of course, just as I, I, I've done this before, and I'm really, really sorry if I'm repeating myself, I'm going to walk through how you might Select different projects here, okay? So here's an Enron project. I just made up the names, obviously. I This was the hardest part. I couldn't think of what names to give these things. And then we have, uh, you know, some Lee Pong. That's that guy who went to the strip clubs or something and eh, became a multimillionaire because he sold his stocks or something. And then we have uh, more, more uh, Lehman Brothers here, okay? Hugo Chavez is the... O&M contractor, okay, and, and whatever. I, I, the, my names were not really good, okay? Oh, Michelle Obama, but she has Melania be the O&M contractor and the developer is, is, is Stormy Daniels or something. Okay, enough. All right, and all of these have different characteristics. This is a really bad one, okay? And the big issues here are, sorry about it, if I hope I didn't piss you off. If I did, well... Whatever. That's not about this. Now, if we, we're going to allow debt. So I put a little button, and I'm going to show you a little bit on the Excel how to apply these buttons. 
And, you know, <laughs> I've looked at these other things. If you come to my class and you want to know how to make these things in great detail or you want to collect a bunch of tax equity materials, wind models, videos, tax solar models. I don't know how many models I've got here. I'm kind of organizing them. You know, maybe I'll give you a present. And that, and really an objective of this video is to show you, to get you comfortable enough. This is only an annual model. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. But you can hopefully really learn kind of how to do things. Now, here's what I want to show you a little bit, okay? We've got a really low IRR on this one. Well, let's let's take this one. This one's got a little bit of a higher IRR, and that, but then after this is the pre-tax unlevered, ungeared IRR unlevered. Then, if you put some debt in here, it's a little bit high. You know, if we of course reduce our interest rate, which might be unrealistic. Oops, I went up instead of down. You know, we'll we'll we'll, we'll get a little bit higher IRR. After tax, the IRR goes up, not down, because of the investment tax credits and the depreciation and on a so we we've we've already taken this and gone from 5 to 13 all right uh, and the, the levered IRR is actually higher it's kind of, this is kind of out of order isn't it this is pre-tax levered after tax unlevered and here's what I'm going to do while I go through these things I am really sorry. Now, all these things that do this, it's just all I did was make a little text, and I found out that you can do this with some kind of copying with... Uh, you can do this another way. I can't remember. My friend Patrick showed me how to do that. Uh, uh, I'm going to pause. Okay, I changed this around. The way I changed it around, I, it was kind of embarrassing. But basically, you take some data from the, some results from the output page, and then you just start stringing it together and formatting with the text uh, function. And then when, once you get into these ones, you have to kind of right-click, and you just put an equal sign, and you go to those things. That's how I do it. There, there's another way to do it that I found out. Okay, so now it says that here's that. And what we want to do is magnify this return. Now, this return is really too high. Let's, we, we're also going to, we can put a lower PPA rate so we can bid on this. And if we only get something like a unlevered IRR of, let's say, 2%, that's enough to give us a pretty high return. And then, look at this. Then we sit here, take this un after tax levered IRR, and we give some to the tax investor. Perhaps I should somehow make this tax investor a little bit bolder, change the colors. You know, I told you before that I presented this one, and the biggest question I got was, why are those colors like that? And this one gets a little bit of a low IRR. Now we can switch how much the, the tax investor puts in, then they, they get a higher return. And if you put that, it, it, uh, and then developer gets a lower return. Now you could instead switch this and instead of making a project debt, make it back leverage. And if you make it back leverage, look what happens to that poor old tax investor. And we could try to put a bigger DRO in here, and that doesn't even help. And what happens is the uh, uh, financing really affects things. So we, what we're going to have to do is maybe lower their return a little bit, their contribution a little bit. Then they get a really high return. And then we can try to put it with, then it, it, we could put a lower one. And if we put a lower DRO, there's a little bit of an effect of the DRO, and I want to explain that. It's not a very big effect. Yeah. Uh, let's put an even lower uh, uh, contribution here. This is the kind of contribution I understand. If they didn't have this thing called stranded taxes, 
that are affected by all the partnership tax accounting. And if you put project debt in here, you get one IRR. If you, ooh, it's low, lower if you put project. This is an odd one. Uh, uh, let's put a higher one. Let's put some DRO in here, and then this this uh, it, the DRO can affect the after-tax IRR. So what I'm going to do in this set of videos is walk through all of that, starting with how we compute th this one right now. That will take really two videos. This one will take two videos, so we're up to four. This one will take one video, I hope. Okay, and this project debt will be part of... The second video, this back leverage, will be part of the last one. And I hope you can kind of see this. Now, some people say, oh, I don't like IRR. Well, go to, oh, we, we like ROI, some bullshit uh, statistic that doesn't mean anything. But basically, we don't really have much of a choice. You can compute some, you can get fancy with some, some other kind of IRR statistics. But these people don't like to tell you how much they're earning because they have to, this is the amount they put in, only 21% over and above the ITC. And if this gets down to 10%, and for putting that little bit, the ITC, they get back immediately. They get that back immediately. So if you put in only something like 10% above the ITC, for that little 16% of the project cost, they basically get all the tax depreciation back. And they get some of these preferred dividends, and then they get to sell their assets. And hopefully, all of the kind of things that really have a big effect are on here. So now let's, I'm going to uh, just walk you through a couple of things. I'm going to talk about this in this operating kind of just PPAs and inflation. It's not a big deal. Merchant, we'll talk about merchant prices a lot, uh, not a lot, a little bit, because there are merchant risks more and more. We'll talk about some renewable energy credits and corporate PPAs that can have different forms. And I, I'm going to find some examples of some corporate uh, PPAs so you can see how they, they work and how, they, how they're different than uh, uh, old-fashioned, I'll call them old-fashioned uh, 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 PPAs, okay? And why did I do that? I didn't mean to. Okay, so let's show you how this works. The, the way this works is essentially, I there are all these ways I have to read things in, but there's just a little index function, and we define the the who the contractors are for our little buttons. We put some PPA prices uh, assumptions in. We put some O&M, uh, sorry. We put some operational assumptions. And really, this should be moved around a little, shouldn't it be? Because you sh I think you always start with the uh, capacity. And unfortunately, as I've gone through this, uh, uh, we haven't set it up exactly right. You should start with the capacity, then go to maybe the... CapEx, then the O&M, and then some of the tax assumptions, then some of the debt inputs, for, and, and then a few inputs that are really time series based. Okay, and we just set this up because you almost always, uh, I'll try to explain that time series versus the constants. That's an absolutely uh, 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 crucial kind of thing to do. And we take that and we just put a little, uh, this I've done so many times, you know, this is just a little right click. We go back and forth or one sheet and then the other. And this D3 is like our, kind of like a scenario number. Okay. And uh, we, we, so it, this is index. It just uses this scenario and we get all of these inputs. Now, if you come to my class, you'll get all these other models that will kind of go through just a little bit, some of these other models, and you'll get to see other setups, okay? And I'm not saying this is good because I got criticized for my uh, artistic abilities, and I don't know, I'm trying to make this generic macros, but if you have better ways to do it, whatever, I, 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 I whatever. 
Now this comes from, uh, uh, okay, I've got to change this. This project database is blue, and I'm going to leave a, a, a title column, but I don't want a sum column. I'm going to mark sheets based on the tab color. I guess I'll, I'll leave the flags in, and how many rows do you want at the top? Perhaps four, just where you, you're going to kind of do your freeze pane, and maybe that black color isn't so good, but whatever. Okay, and I'm going to do that a lot. That's the generic macros, and the generic macros had a really bad day the other day, yesterday. S screwing up this stupid thing. Okay, and it's, uh, I don't know, maybe it's taking a little bit longer than it should. Okay, and, and now what will happen is everything that comes from the project database, I hope the, uh, uh, it won't be too... Uh, it, it, it's kind of got this light blue color because it comes from that. So everything basically comes. And we start with some production capacity, the annual yield. That's the kilowatt hours you actually produce divided by the DC. And then we'll put some degradation and all the rest of the stuff. Put some CapEx. Now let me stop. I'm going to just stop at a couple of things with the CapEx. Perhaps this is why this is taking so long. You know, I here, you know, I don't know as I make these videos, uh, uh, things change. The last one, uh, first time I made a solar project, I think the cost per kW of panel was probably a thousand or two thousand maybe. And then this one, I'm just reminding you about this one, okay? And whatever, I don't know what. Okay, uh, so here's what happened. I'm going to edit the stupid video a little bit. But what I have done is collected various dates from PV Insights. I go to give them credit. And I changed the little password thing. But what has happened is, you know, in 2015, the cost of a panel per not per watt per kilowatt was 607 for a silicon 634 for a thin film you get to today look in may 168 213 there's a much bigger differential between the thin film and the polysilicon so when we get back i got to save this now if you i put this a file on my website but it's not I haven't uploaded it recently I'm gonna kind of upload it again so but I really have to kind of upload it every single month and I never will bother to do that if you want the updated file you can ask for the resources and send me an email and all that stuff I mean I whatever you can just get the latest ones and do what you'd like so when I get these kind of things uh -huh. and you know when i see a epc cost of 178 when the panel cost is 0.168 i say where's all this adder who's making all this profit you got to get some panels stick it on a roof or whatever is that real god whatever you guys all make your profits that's fine okay and maybe because you get such big tax benefits from this, you want to kind of inflate this and pass it around and all that kind of stuff. Okay. So what the next thing I've done is I've been able to say, okay, what happens if we change some of these costs? Of course, the IRR goes up dramatically. You know where they're building this? It's We've got all the tariff stuff going on. But in China, oh, I can't even go down uh, enough in, 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 in you can't I guess you know there might be tariffs from China but you know what the Chinese have done I love it they've gone to Malaysia and and built some factories and just uh, the put the Chinese workers work in Malaysia and all that stuff and then so you can change any of this stuff then you got a you know absurd IRR here and you could you know try to put some more here and whatever and then you can reset the sensitivity and the way that works is you go to the 
for for inputs that have a little spinner box right here and I've, i'm of course going to give you the file because my friend jeff who i'm working on it said that's fine he's a really really nice guy jeff uh, from cincinnati well he's from detroit actually and and people from detroit are really good sometimes that's a different subject uh here the the uh so you put this kind of spinner box here, it changes this, and the actual input that goes in, this is a capacity factor sensitivity, the actual input that goes in uh, uh, to the model then in this operations is from the red sheet. You see how it's red? So it comes from the red sheet. And it comes from the one, well, that was a bad example. Let's go back to... Uh, uh, that was the capacity yield, okay? This would be the one after you've pushed it up or down. And I just use percentages to push it up or down. So, you know, if you look at that, you, you know, and if you would actually take my class and you want to really do this, you want to really say, stop, I don't want to watch you make a video. That's as boring as hell. I actually want to do this myself I've officially made the classes like three, a few three-hour sessions. But if you say, no, no, stay late and show me exactly how to do this. You didn't do it well enough. That's what I'm going to do. I promise. And if you need one on the weekends or something, send me an email. So here's our cost per, per watt. And then, of course, we put another sensitivity factor. That's how the thing works. And if you reset the sensitivity, and instead of Zenedine Zidane, we take the Vladimir Zelensky company, then we, we get all the inputs for the database, and we can do the same sort of thing. So all these horrible scenario analysis, you see, I would rather, and I think my friends who look at this say, no, no, I'd rather just play with those spinner box and be able to reset them and do my real strategy. Now, after, oh, I'm yelling too loud in my thing because I get so excited when I make these videos. So we put, I, I would suggest when this is a better setup, put all the production and the capacity and the degradation, standard kind of stuff. We talked a, a little bit about the uh, uh, CapEx and it's possible. Notice I put this do not enter here so much. This is just from a, a data validation prep move this over can i do that okay and then we can put some grants in apparently some states have grants and then we have some transaction fees which are not not a big deal and i should press shift control p here again everything comes because it's blue it comes from the database it says don't enter here and then we have a couple of multiplications you shouldn't enter there either okay and then we have a standard a, a, a cost now a standard ppa now if you go up here I just do you see this is a hundred here okay uh, uh, and in the in, in the database let's say you had and you 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 uh, you want and which we're at, at this one uh, you know what I better do okay I'm gonna do something here so whoops you know this is part of why I'm making the video to kind of practice things and see what's all wrong in this so right now we have the, uh, I would like to mark, uh, uh, this is scenario number three. I'm going to put up here, or, or this is one, and I'm going to just make a alt EIS enter, okay? <laughs> oh, shoot. It's supposed to be fair. Why did it take, why didn't it work last time? And then I'm going to take, I don't need all this stuff. I'm going to take this whole thing. Maybe we'll go all the way over here so we can have many, many projects. And I just realized I wouldn't want to see what project we're on. So I'm going to make a new rule. And when I make a new rule, I'm going to use a formula. But before I do this, I, I have to select the area. And then the rule is you go to the top left, top left, top left. And then you click on this conditional formatting new rule. You use a formula, and it used to be so difficult for me. And I'm going to say when this number, which is always fixed, equals 
this number here, but that's not fixed, so you got to use the F4 a little bit and not the F, uh, not F3, that's function F4. And we want to keep it on row number, fi uh, uh, row number f f five, but allow it to change. And then in the formatting, you know, I, I have been told how sh crappy my color selections are. And I'm going to try to make a light one so we can kind of see which one we're on. And that's kind of in general for the scenario analysis. Okay. Again, I hope I didn't piss anybody off. There's Kim Jong-un company. Okay. I don't think people from North Korea are going to be watching this video. All right. I have a lot of friends from South Korea, like my friend G1, but he won't be watching this. Okay. Uh, uh, so, where was I? Okay, for this one, I would like the PPA rate to just change. Now, I would like to, in a, after year 5, I'd like to have it change, and after year uh, 12, I'd have to change, and 15, and then I don't want to put the last one. And this one I take, this one comes from above, I guess, and then I'm going to put this point oh. Seven two five and point oh eight and point oh nine. Okay, so we 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 have the flexibility to change things, to change it. And now, if I put a hundred over here, that I don't think the solar project will last for a hundred years. Maybe other kinds of electricity projects will last a hundred years, but not solar. I've seen some coal plants that just got retired that lasted about that long. Okay. It's pretty good they're retired. Okay. Uh, I don't want to piss anybody off about that either. Okay. And so now... Okay. It, oh, just a minute. Okay. And this is forcing me to think through things. I had an error. This absolutely always... You see where this comes from by control and square bracket. If you take my class, unfortunately, you're going to have to do it. Because watching somebody else do the Excel, I found, is really a, one of the most boring things in the world. Now, if when you're going to use this, I emphasize, and I've convinced some people, I think... That it's right, and then I had a problem here too, and I'm really sorry about that. And I'm just going to leave the video on just for a second, okay? So I'm fixing things as I go along for my friend Jeff too, who I don't think will watch this video. Uh, uh, so now, so what you do is take these these ones over here and put them in here, and we better make sure that the the inflation rates are correct too. And this would be too boring if you have to watch that, but I, I need to uh, change this. Excuse me. Okay. And now once we, so you can, the good news is that you can change, I'm explaining things hopefully a little bit. You can change some of this stuff. Now, now let's take this data and start putting it in the model. Okay. And of course, in a model, you need, this year we did this. This is our basic year. This is simply an annual model. And if you complain about it being an annual model, I don't know what to say. Now we're making it into one day a periodic model, which is about the easiest thing of the whole thing. You can watch about uh, ten, 10 different stupid videos on how to do all this timing. Year zero is when we make the investment. And for solar, it's good enough, probably. But then we just make a year counter with EIS. And then we have a flag, and we put the lifetime. I'm get pressing control and square bracket, and we get the life. Now, there's a little bit of a problem. Sometimes you want to automatically make the life. If, the, if you press this one and it's false, the life is equal to the PPA term. If you click on this one, then you can allow a merchant tail, and this one doesn't have a merchant tail, but that's what we'll talk about. And you want to make this all very, uh, 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 very, very flexible so you can add these kind of things. 
All right, and then we do a standard. This is so boring now, I can't stand it. But then we say, okay, take this number and just say, well, when it's less than or equal to the year, then we're alive, okay? And let's see if I have another one where we have, within this case, we have 20 years, and I don't know if we put a merchant tail in here. The project life, and we go downstairs, and we find the PPA here. So the PPA we just said was equal to the life. Now, what you might want to do then is you go back. You don't change it here. It's black. I, I should say don't change it. I should have put that, that you know, that obviously this is just data and uh, uh, data validation. And yeah, I don't use the other crap, but I u do use this little input message. Don't, don't you, you dare change it here. Here, uh, go to the database, go to the right and, and change the blue. Okay, ooh, okay, and then if you want to then, oops, copy it, you can go all the way down and you put Alt E S to copy it as a, a, a space special. This is from the old Excel, and you click on N if you, if you want, which is the the where is the the validation? Uh, instead of pressing N, I'll just use that, which I don't usually do. And then uh, hopefully, don't you dare change it here. Okay, so we want to make this. We're on this one now, and let's make the. Uh, 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 life. This is the PPA term. Oh God, I gotta fix some of this stuff. Okay. And then the project life, let's make 30 years. And now we'll have a merchant tail and we'll say the merchant price is three cents. Who knows in 20 years what it'll be. That's pretty low. And we can put an escalation there and all that. And I've got to talk about that. So this, you could have a merchant tail and you could say, you know, right now, it's different. And then we could, I, maybe I should have this. I said, if it's, if we allow the merchant tail, we get uh, eight, seven versus, it doesn't increase it much because that price is, is not so high for the merchant. And I didn't put this merchant, I didn't put a little spinner box all here for the merchant, but we could. Okay, and then let's just see how this works. So, I, I don't know if I'm if your head is spinning or you've turned the video off or you're complaining that that I'm not going uh, you know really explaining things very well but that now we have a a uh, this one right now it's 20 because we made the false the life is equal to the term so let's make it true and then we put we've got 30 years and we have our life flag okay and we've also, in tax equity, you better basically always make a flag, or at least for solar, it, the real number is six and a half years. It's not six years, but we have one, two, three, four, five, six. And apparently that's kind of good enough. And then we, of course, take the capacity from over here. I've done this so many times, and I am obsessed with it. Instead of putting this in a bunch of little rows up here, you put it right when you, where you want it. And if you're really, you know, obsessed, you can put a little description here. You could add a little column and say, well, where did this number come from? And then we put the yield in, and then I just print out the capacity factor uh, uh, and this kind of was not well done, but the capacity factor would be the 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 uh, output uh, uh, before the degradation. I, I, I've got to, I can't do that right now. We put the degradation in here. Sorry about that. And this time we didn't just put a flat number in. If you really wanted to change that, there's an option where it 
changes over time. And then finally, now if you have a, 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 a corporate PPA, I'm going to have to go through this again uh, in a different video. But you can't, if you're, you're, you're going to hedge against a, a, a price, and you're probably going to, the, the, if you're going to have a corporate PPA, it's probably going to be something like a 10-year hedge. So this PPA term, which could be corporate or utility. Okay, so let's do this. Let's put the merchant price to be $0.04. Cents. How about four and a half cents? And let's make this 10 years. And then you're going to have to make a merchant curve. Okay, so you're going to have a big, long merchant tail. This is going to be by far the most important thing. And perhaps you, you, you almost want a forward curve, this horrible forward curve. But can I just talk about merchant prices? And, and then we're going to have a basis risk. And you're going to have to lock in kind of this P99. You're going to have to lock in a low amount. Because if you lock in revenues from a high amount and you don't produce that power, you're stuck. You, you've got to go and buy it from the market and, and, and then the, uh, sell it at the hedged rate. And you've got a big risk. You've got to hedge a low amount. And there might be some surplus power. You've got to hedge perhaps a P99. That's what they do in wind. You've got to hedge a lower amount. And then the, the amount in excess of that, well, it might catch a really low price. And what I've done here, and nobody kind of really looks at this, and I haven't updated it, but I'm going to. Um, this is my next project, which who knows what will happen. You know, in Australia, I can't remember if I put this. Thing. I put these these market prices, and here's what kind of happened. This is the demand and the price. Look at these kind of sudden peaks. Okay, for this is for Southern Australia, and there's no peaks. The price is negative, and if you're producing surplus power, extra. And the price is negative. You better turn your solar projects off. You're going to get a zero. In this other region, for exactly the same day, we get a peak price. There's a big risk for this. There's in a corporate PPA, you've got a big risk, and you better go through that. Now I'm going. I thought this little one-day thing that I happened to choose, which was in the summertime in January, something in Australia, was a pretty cool example of that. I mean, people are all talking about the duck curve and everything else. So when you put this in, you've got to be very, very careful, okay? And enough of that. So this power is the total power you produce, but this is the amount you hedge, and that could be different. I've not got this as a corporate PPA yet, but I will, okay? And, and then the rest of it, you'll buy at a merchant price. And there are all these true-ups, and I'll go through those true-ups again because I haven't really read through these corporate PPAs yet. And then we have a PPA flag and a merchant flag. And again, this is, of course, this is the 10 years, and you just better use a little thing. And who really gives a crap if you, if you uh, uh, put in true or false? And if you want to count this just for uh, uh, sum this, you could put a count if, you know, uh, uh, here – and just click on all these and put comma true. You know, that that's just instead of a sum. Why does it say plot area there? Okay, so that's how my, how many uh, periods. And, and, and Hattie told me this. She said, why in the hell don't you put the sum column there, you idiot? No, she would never say it like that. But she did tell me to put it in all the time in the model. Okay, and then... The, the PPA price without inflation here, and this time, uh-oh, it's all the same. And we better be really careful here because this was a, a, a PPA price without, we, were so, we should have made a lookup, uh-oh, and we should have used this year. So you say, look up that year. Then you got to find the base for the lookup. 
And it should always be, I hope I've just changed the uh, 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 thing. And then, oops, 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 it's in the inputs. And you click on the entire call, row. And then after you click on the entire row, see, I do have 100 in for that one. So that was correct. Oh, I just was really afraid of that because in our project database, and I'm sorry to go back and forth on this, for another project, you remember I put this, and this is where it looks like, and I'm talking to myself, and you have to tell me, you know, if you take my class, if you're one of the very few people, I'm going to limit my class size to 10, you know, and this is the one I have to put it on our Kim Jong-un uh, uh, scenario. Okay, and then uh, 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 then it will always, this is why I always say, put this across like this. I don't care what kind of model you are. I'm working on this gigantic nightmare model right now. And I change this so I can use the lookup and I can use the whole row. Just format it like that. I know it won't. I'll, know I'll never prevail on that one as if it really matters. And then, so then our PPA prices are changing. And we could really put this, we could almost just model this as a price and really not say whether it's PPA or merchant and all that stuff. Okay, and then we, this is just too standard. Uh, uh, then we can put in some, uh, uh, we have a flag for when the, the, PPA is inflating, the PPA inflation occurrence thing or something like that. Okay, that's pretty kind of boring. Frequency of, of, of uh, it, it escalates every year, or every five years, or every two years, whatever. That's what that's supposed to be. Now, it, it gave the conditional formatting here, which really, uh, you know, there's really no... There are no true and falses here, are they? So those, those, the conditional format looks for one and zeros, and what I shouldn't, I, I just shouldn't have, and I don't have a sum column in this one, and I think all the rest is okay, and I'll just color the sheet. So that conditional formatting, and I think I did something wrong just now, but that's okay, because I, I, I didn't, I, I'm, <sighs> um, not being like Napoleon who said, dress me slowly because I'm in a hurry. I just was in too much of a hurry. Okay, and I'm saving the file and uh, did it fix it? Ah, it did fix it. And that's because I, I had a little checkbox here that said clear out the clean the conditional formatting. So that cleans the old stuff out. You might, of course, not want to do that because it... <laughs> It didn't really work because I have to do this thing again and I'm not going to belabor you with that. So it cleaned out everything and I don't know how to... Kind of... Okay, sorry about that. So here's our selected uh, project. And um, now, we're... <laughs> okay, let's go back to our purple sheet. Okay. I haven't reformatted this one to get the sums. Okay, so that's a little bit of the lookup and our inflation index. And then we put in our post uh, PPA merchant price that really should have a whole forward curve. And in this one, I had no merchant price. Okay, because this one was just a regular old long-term PPA price. So that just illustrates it's it's so kind of basic. I almost didn't want to do it. But now when you have a corporate PPA, here's what can happen. And in this, okay, as I, in my merchant kind of analysis, okay, I am going to do a little more on some of these markets where you can find out, whoops, Oh, come on, come on. This one, I, I, I need to uh, uh, kind of go through some of these. But in the in U.S., for example, you can, 
in these ones, you can get hour by hour pretty easily. Hour by hour, and you can get for these locational marginal prices, you can see if you put your wind farm here, there's going to be a basis differential for the hub. So this is where you're going to make your hedge. But when you actually sell the power, you might have your wind farm here, and you're going to lose some money in between. That's called the basis differential. Okay, and these are hubs. Oh, these are these are locations. They have a location for the the a city gate, and then they have the the uh, uh, regions. Okay, and they're different hubs, and we'll go through kind of how you would actually compute a basis differential. And I've got some videos, and uh, and I haven't. I, I I've got a kind of update this one. So my goal is to get as many different kind of merchant price markets around the world, not just at all. I'm not, even though I kind of have, have my U.S. accent, you know, and I've lived to, lived in the U.S., but I've also tra got to travel. And I think comparing different markets in different places of the world and going through case studies from the California crisis to the U.K., bankruptcies to australia negative prices and peaks and to overcapacity in singapore to philip turkey what's happened there it's just wonderful that you can see all these prices and then instead of just taking and accepting some some forward price from some consultant you can kind of get a real historic uh, perspective on things okay and then we go to O&M expenses. And basically, this is kind of real simple. Now, in this case, we have a <laughs> management fee. I shouldn't laugh because everybody charges these management fees. I want to be a manager. Ooh, this is the money I want. How much is our manager getting? Let's go see this. Our manager is getting 18 thousand i guess that's per year because this is in dollars and what do you have to do when you manage a solar project this one's only five fauci and company they got two thousand hmm. Lehman brothers get seven thousand i don't know what you do you watch the sun go up and down and you record it or something okay and then you have to buy insurance for these panels models where the property taxes kind of go crazy. This is, we have flat property taxes. Uh, come on, do we have one uh, where where it go, goes down? This one goes down because the asset depreciates. And then to get the property taxes, so each one of these, let's just go back up. So for each one of these, you can kind of get a standard cost per KW. I think nine is very, very high for cleaning off a few panels and doing that. Uh, somebody's making some nice profits in there, I think. But that's, again, none of my business. And you can put different inflation rates. Why you would put a higher inflation rate in one than the other is another mystery to me. Okay, but maybe that's in the agreement. If you think you can predict the inflation rate in five years, 10 years, one year, and you are smart enough to put a different inflation on different categories, whatever. Okay, this one, the, in this case, the property taxes depreciate. And what I have here is you can put a flat annual amount or a monthly amount, and you can put, put all of these different kind of property tax things in here. Okay. In this case, I have a property tax per year, and then it, it, it reduces. Okay. And then finally, we have some land leases. And the good news here is between this and some of the other models, perhaps you can get a sense of what some of these costs really are. And then you just multiply it all, the inflation by the uh, whatever. Why, why does, what's this not? Oh, oh. If we can exclude operation and maintenance expenses for a couple of years if we want. That, that occurred in a couple of ones. And uh, I hope that this is the end of the project life, right? And then we have, all, of course, all the flags turn it on and off. And the periodic model really would be no different whatsoever. 
And then we're almost there. We're almost there. We're going to compute the EBITDA. We can compute the EBITDA from uh, contracted revenues or contracted plus the uncontracted revenues, just in case you'd have a different DSCR criteria, which is the subject of the next video for one versus the other. I haven't really added that in, but it's possible to say when you're at the merchant period, we need a higher DSCR and we're going to size the debt with a higher DSCR and do that sort of thing. Okay. And then uh, you can go a, a kind of crazy. I put uh, invert possible inverter replacement in year 15 and year 25, or we could spread it out or spread it out over a different period. And frankly, that's what I'm adding. When, by the time I give you this model, it is entirely possible that there'll be an even fancier thing. And this in, inverter cost here then is this is is 0 0.055. So I'm, I best uh, 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 oops. It came from here. This is our inverter cost. And I better go backwards. I'm, I'm pressing F5 and going back to here. Okay. And remember, so this is if the panels are costing uh, uh, 168 per kilowatt, this is uh, uh, 55 per kilowatt, which is actually... These have come down too. These have come down too, and I, 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 I think if you want to get data on inverter costs, I think this is way too high. First of all, and 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 you, I think, can never remember quite this, and and I think that PV Insight, you have to pay them some money, and that might be a good idea. I wish I had the money to pay them, but I don't because I. Man, my 1999 van just lost its brakes and I had to pay for that and I didn't fix it properly. And then we can put a, then what I do finally, okay, and I, I think we're just about there with the inverter. I, I, I didn't explain that very well, but you just put a little flag here in year 25 and, and whatever, uh, whenever there was another one. Ooh. 25, you're not going in, in, to, in, in, <laughs> I can't get away. You're not going to replace an inverter in the last year, okay? But you can put two ones in, and then you can inflate it, and then you put the cost in, and uh, we have this cost, okay? So we have a big extra inverter cost that comes in in this year, and then we take our pre-tax cash flow, and we get this enormous IRR that's way, way too high because of all the assumptions I put in for this one. So let's put some other one of these. Even six is very, very high. This is pre-tax. Remember, we get all these. This this one would be more typical, only 2.5%. You can say, there's no way that can work. And you go to this one, it's only 2.5%. The levered IRR, because the interest rate is higher than this, is even lower. But <laughs> after tax, it goes up to here. And then uh, uh, after leverage and after tax, it goes up to 8%. And then we give these people 15%. After all of this complicated tax stuff, this we only get 5.04. So what we really want to do is put this one up a little bit. So we can get our IRR here higher, and should we look at pre-tax or after-tax? We debate that because we don't know the tax position of the uh, 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 developer. Where we know the tax, to, we know these guys can use tax because they're really rich people, like Google and all these people who take all your money and are so uh, Amazon and everything. Okay, and then we we can if but if we don't put project debt in, their IRR completely gets wiped out. And even the DRO doesn't really help. It helps a little bit, not not enough. And we have to go through kind of how all of that works. And that's really the subject for the next uh, video. So I am, now after I thought I had made the, the video and finished the video, I realized I didn't really cover renewable energy credits. 
And I, I talked about a little bit about the merchant curve, and I realized that basically, you know, if you have a corporate PPA, this, what you call this forward curve, which, you know, typically is is some kind of sudden increase, uh, 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 that was a lot of crap. Okay, so I'm going to cover those just a little bit more. It's a long video. Please, please turn it off. And there are a couple of little Excel things I, I will do. All right. Um, first, and uh, uh, first, let's discuss this renewable energy credit. Now, in this file that you will get because of Jeff, he gave me something. And he, he gave me a REC database. And I don't even know. Some of these numbers are totally surprising. These are in USD per megawatt hour. So in Washington, D.C., for a period of five years, you can get this enormous... This is, remember, if something's in a dollar per megawatt hour or euro per megawatt hour, if we want dollar per kilowatt hour, we divide that by a thousand and you get 0.35. And that 0.35 USD, I think, is 35 cents. That's 35 cents a kilowatt hour compared to merchant prices, which we're going to look at, which might be in the neighborhood of. Uh, uh, actually, it would be in the neighborhood of 35 USD per megawatt hour, 3.5 cents. Oh, God, I'm just losing it. Okay, so this would be $6 per megawatt hour, 0.6 cents, and merchant prices may be 30 so this would be this one would double the merchant price and then you can sign up for these for a long term period so uh, and Jeff said can't we kind of put this in a database so we can or already pick things or we could put no value or we could just make our own contract values and put them in here and that's fine the only thing that i i didn't really do correctly here is, is just a little Excel thing. So the, the problem is what we're going to do is we're going to use a little bit of a match and index. But the first thing is we better do a data validation, okay? You, usually I'm kind of against data validations, but it's not so bad. I used to get excited by this a long time ago. So we can put a list and then, you know, in a really old 2003 version of Excel, you couldn't have done this, and then they fixed that little thing. And I'm looking for the renewable energy credits. And then we will just select this ones. Now, it, these are, of course, not in alphabetical order. Notice it put the uh, uh, things in. And we can even, I think the nicest part of this is the, the message. Let's put uh, energy credit uh, select uh, one of the options by state from in the renewable, we could call it a database, but that's too fancy, energy credit sheet. Okay, and then we'll just press OK. And now, we, of course, we get this little thing here, and we get, we better pick one of these. And then you can go, oh, maybe I'm really losing it. <laughs> God, Control C first. Idiot I am. Alt E S, and then press N again for the validation. Okay, and that now we'll have to put one over here, and if we're forced to put one over here. This is, again, the index function. And then we can put the different renewable energy credit. Huh. Let's go over here and let's say our Zenedine Zidane project, which currently has 
and 5, let's say it got this DC. Don't forget to put the rect term. So let's say we, we had it. Let's put all these in. It's a 10-year term. It really doesn't matter. Okay? Well, it matters a lot. But, so if we were able to get these rec credits, our project IRR goes to 25%. If we were in, uh, this is just a PJM, then it would go up by a little, and we can put a no value. Okay, and don't sue me if I put the wrong energy renewable credits in. I got this from somebody else, and I've never seen a, a, a renewable energy credit contract. Perhaps I can get a hold of one. Okay, and here's how it works. So once it, this no value goes into here, and then... You use a match function. We can't use a lookup. We match this against the whole column C in the energy credit spreadsheet. Notice that this is a little bit of a red, reddish color, and that's because this energy credit sheet is also a reddish color. Okay, that's that issue done. And I'm outside. I know. I, I hope people. It, there's some background noise. I hope it doesn't irritate you so too, too much so we get this and oh no I gotta go back and that's line 17 and right now we're on no value for 17 if we put PJM here it would be on line 7 that's just how the match works and again it, the best thing to do I think is to <sighs> where are we uh, uh, here just use the entire line. So PJM, we said, was, if I can't remember, was line 7. And then we have kind of this year by year going across, as usual. And then I need to move my horrible little thing that I made with the data validation up here. And then we say, okay, let's use the index together with the match. This is the classic index match that a lot of people are so proud of and think they're so good for doing blah, blah, blah. But we're going to use the whole column E. We're not going to select it, and then we're going to use it against that. And it will compute then this, this uh, renewable energy credit, which apparently went down by year 20. Of course, we could then... Say, okay, what if we put a 20-year contract in here? What happens to the IRR? That's the uh, renewable energy credit. Now, I just want to talk to you a little for, for a moment about, hopefully, I can go here. I want to talk to you more about the energy prices. If we go to the U.S. merchant prices, now I'm going to update this. And what I did... And let's try to open this file. This is where you go to get the data. And where in the heck is, is that file? Ha ah, ah. No wonder nobody likes this and everybody doesn't show anything. I didn't, I got to put these stuff, I got to put a lot of stuff on my web, the website, my old testimony and all that. If we go to electricity and then go after to electricity, go to conventional electricity and go to the spot electricity price, this is where you get the databases. And I think in that old website I had, I didn't, oh, I've got to do a lot of updating. And what I didn't say before is I am obsessed, absolutely obsessed with coming up with ways to automatically update this data and making it as effortless as possible. Now, it is impossible, I think, to have, except for this wonderful uh, 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 Nord pool, not knee pool, I was about to say Nord pool in, in, you know, Denmark and Norway and Sweden and all that, because they're connected with the rest of Europe, they're connected with the UK, so it's not only Nord pool you get, and their process to download the data is much simpler. Now, here's what I'm, I'm trying to say with this one. Okay, oh, God, it's, I'm going to have a, I'm going to be patient, okay, because that's okay. And then this is, 
this is knee pool, not Nord pool in the U.S. And we could look at ERCOT, which is the... Ooh, something happened on that one uh, with, with a couple of the periods. And this is not updated yet. And the one thing that is common, this is uh, uh, California... Okay, and I like to get these long-term prices when I think about the forward curves. Okay, but in just about any one of these, do I have PJM? This is just on peak. So we really need to do our basis differential and to do a much more careful analysis. We need on and off peak. And I love this EIA database that gives you kind of day by day on peak, but it's really not good enough. We really have to go to the individual sites and then mess around with all the methods to download the data. Okay. And I don't think I, I... Do I go to 2017? I don't... Yes, I go to 2017. And then, instead of uh, uh, this one, we can look at the heat rate. This is the electricity divi price divided by the gas price. And we had some funny peaks and all that and this time i'm comparing pjm which had some funny things going on with this and here's what you notice this is this has been rather constant and if you have a forward power curve everything really depends on the gas price and basically, you should be able to take a gas price, take a heat rate, look at what the historic heat rate is, and say you don't have to make your forecast in such a simplistic method. I spent years and years of my life making these forecasts. I remember when everybody made these forecasts and they were so wrong, and everybody kind of has these price curves that go up. And I think you start by looking at some real long-term history. That's what I'm trying to get on this database, okay? And uh, that's enough. I'm going to close this, and there'll be another video because I'm supposed to go. I, mean, I wish I could travel to my friends in Malaysia. They wanted a whole little thing on merchant prices, which means I'm going to have to make some videos and really put this stuff together in a little bit better of a way. Okay, but that's I've got a lot of other stuff to do. First, so what I did here is added down here, right at the bottom, a, a, a merchant forward price curve. That's what you call it. And I put some data. And this time, because it's typically you put in per megawatt hour instead per kilowatt hour, I put in some things and I made some kind of silly assumptions that these go up. And those prices I looked at just before were nominal prices. So the real price was going down. There hasn't been much inflation over that period, but huh, that's that's that. And we, we could have printed out the annual price, and you'd have to be so careful. You have to, if, if you're going to hedge this, you're going to have to hedge it against a curve which shows the solar power. So once we get a hold of one of these corporate PPAs, which my friends are going to give me, we're going to go through this in a lot more detail. But for now... We'll just talk about incorporating these these things. So what you need to do is then get this over to the other models. So why don't we put instead of this merchant price here, this is the, no, this is the merchant price on the amount you have hedged. And again, remember in Australia that was negative, and in in in, in southern Australia, and it was positive in New South Wales or something. How much you, this is a real variable. This is a real exposure. But I'm just talking about the merchant price. Uh, uh, and, and we'll do one more thing and then kind of finish this whole thing off. So let's put year. Now we have, I think, about 30 years. One, two, three, four, five. Let's just go through and... Uh, oh, yes. Over here, it shows you how many columns we have so far. 25, 30. And then you put equal transpose. And then you don't get afraid and think this transpose is a difficult thing like I used to. And then you press shift, control, enter.
Oops, and then I up. Oh, yep, yeah, that's okay. That's okay. Shift control left of the one. And then let's put the merchant price in, and perhaps on this one we'll put equal. Let's do the same thing. I hope that will work with that little thing in there first. And you put equal transpose. And remember, this is, I'm shouting, sorry, but we need that like that to uh, shift control one, perhaps for this one. We need that uh, uh, for this. And then we can put a, a merchant, we can call that our merchant price a real or or nominal if inflation rate is zero. Okay, uh, it's a little bit of a long title. We can get philosophical about that too. I'd rather have long titles than guess what's going on. And then we can put merchant uh, inflation if entering real prices, okay? And I got fancy and put price per period, okay? And then uh, we can uh, uh, go up here. Now, the only problem is we had an old merchant price thing, and I'm going to just delete this. And it says, don't insert any lines, so I'm going to not insert any lines. I'm going to leave that as a blank line. Okay, and then we just have to implement this. And where do we have the... <sighs> so let's find, just for a minute, where does this come from? This comes from the, uh, uh, the escalator... And, of course, I was wrong. Let's call this the, let's call this the, the, the uh, PPA escalator. Excuse me. And, and I'm going to fix the rest. You don't have to watch me fix this. So this, I was just totally wrong. This is all going to be nom uh, 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 nominal prices. Uh, uh, okay. And I said I... And, and we'll take the inflation out. So what, what we'll do then is go to our SPV operations. So you can see we're going to go through the next accounts in the subsequent visit, <laughs> videos. And we have the post-PPA merchant price. And we don't need this one anymore. And we put an equal lookup. And that's exactly why we needed the transpose. Once again, you click on this one, and you click on the entire row here. Now, if anybody, I have made a new test. I've been making all these tests about whether this long, using the entire row hurts you or helps you, and I put these time tests in, and I can't find any difference. Okay? And uh, then we can sh shift control R. You don't have to put any F4s. And we put any index here. And for now, I'm going to leave that possibility, but I'm going to take that out. I'm going to take that out because, because let's leave them for now as, as uh, nominal prices. And, and um, uh, it's obvious. Maybe I'll change this. Maybe I won't. And the only other thing there is, of course, I put it dollars per a kilowatt hour, so I better divide this not by a thousand, but by uh, uh, yes, <laughs> excuse me, by a thousand because there are a thousand, and maybe we better uh, insert that thing. Okay, so that's that. Uh, sorry about having to make this amendment to the video.